All right, hello, welcome everyone. How's everyone doing? Thank you so much for joining us today um, for our monthly Pocus Bias webinar. My name is Daria. I'm the Global Learning Program Manager with Pocus Certification Academy, and I will be your webinar host today. The webinar is now beginning, so all lines have been muted. Please use Q&A box for any questions or the chat box for comments you have throughout the webinar. And today's topic is successful cardiac sc scanning, and our speaker is James Day. James has been a cardiac sonographer since 1992, who in addition to providing a scanning service business to private practices, was also a clinician at an urban teaching hospital in the Philadelphia metro region. While at Thomas Jefferson University Medical College, James managed 40 simulation programs and taught all modules of focus, including anatomy and physiology, Ross anatomy, physical exam lectures, gel rounds, resident orientation, ultrafest in Philadelphia, as well as private workshop. He's worked on uh, also to integrate focus into the medical school, school curriculum. James now is a part of our clinical team at the Focus Certification Academy. And uh, thank you so much, James, for joining us today and taking the time. Um, thank you, Daria. Thank you so much. So the floor is all yours. All right, guys. Hello, world. I'm going to share my screen so we'll get started here. And thank you, guys, out there in the big blue. I want to put on my spectacles so I can see what's happening. Um, everybody got their tea and coffee. I saw a couple participants that are in different time zones, 1 a.m. You guys are real champions. You're staying up that late to grab some basic cardiac scanning. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stay basic. Um, this is level one. Uh, this is how to get yourself good images, basic stuff. We're not diving into level two, three, Doppler, and these sort of things. But So let's just get started, and, and you guys will, will catch the instruction as we go along. So, okay, so I did put 10 learning objectives. It's a little ambitious. Most people put four, but we're going to understand there's three different scans, the phased array, how to hold it, orientation of the windows on the human body, little tricks that I've learned, pulling shoulders back and stuff. Okay. Um, and common 2D pathologies of the heart, anatomy of the ventricle and the subcostal image, a little bit about the McConnell sign. And at the end, we're going to have some cardiac cases review. And Daria and I, once in a while, you know, we'll throw out, uh, I think, at least three questions. So with that, um, we're going to talk about this is the Focus Cardiac Ultrasound. Um, this is basically, as you guys are sure are, are aware, that this is the pretty much the standard of care for point of care ultra. Man, this thing wants to keep advancing. Standard of care for cardiac ultrasound examination performed according to a restricted scanning protocol. And of course, it's the extension of the physical exam. So, so when we talk about scans, you know, we've got pretty much three variations of the scan. So there's a scan that sonographers use, which is, you know, typically what I used to do um, a lot. Um, and it's, wow, okay, why is this thing advancing? Um, James, do you want me to maybe share my part of the slides and I can advance for you? It, it almost seems like it's timed. I don't know what's going on. Uh, give me one second. Uh, let me troubleshoot for you. So I'm just going to keep talking, guys. So we have three variations. We have the base, the sonographer one, which is Doppler and measuring continuity equation and creating a, a preliminary report for the cardiologist to typically read. Lots of measurements, really involved, anywhere from 15 to 45 minutes. Aortic stenosis cases could be up to 50 minutes. Um, and then we have the focused cardiac exam by the international consensus. They like you to start with the IVC, get some volumes, and then go through some basic cardiac views. And the subcostal is used for chest trauma, COPD, where you can't see because of the air in the lungs, emphysema. So we do the subcostal, and you can actually do a whole scan subcostally, the short axis, the, and look at everything from the subcostal. Okay. Biggest thing I want to tell people, and I tell people starting. So uh, 
this is really important, guys. The three-point contact, it seems very elementary, but a lot of people hold it like this or they hold it. And when you're making measurements and when you go into level two, three learning, you want to put that hand just like holding a pencil or a pen. You want you see the the way they he's got his thumb he's got his forefinger he's using this side pinky to anchor it and the heel of the hand it's on the patient so what you have there is a nice just like if you were hiking up a hill you use a three point contact so you have stability and you anchor the transducer down very minor point but super important okay um, so we'll go to the next slide. The only time it changes in any of these point of care scans is the subcostal. So when you do the subcostal, obviously if you're doing it like this, you're going to impede getting a good image with this, the four fingers. So what you want to do is hold it like this, put the four finger forward, angle just below the xiphoid process. Um, do not push down on the xiphoid process. In older patients, you could, you know, damage or break break a xiphoid process. We don't want that. Now, this picture, the guy, the picture on the right, the guy is really pushing hard on, on such a, a body habit. It's like an ectomorph body like that. But you're going to push down and sort of tilt up almost 20 degrees and sort of tilt it over ipsilaterally so you're at the, the heart. The heart is right there. Okay, next slide. So that's the only time, guys. Another big problem I notice when I'm doing point of care and cardiology has a way to do it, pediatric has a different way, is the orientation um, is the index marker on your screen. If you'll look at this picture here, there is no reason to memorize or learn both orientations. You really should just remember one set of the echogram probe dot orientations. Do it that way all the time. Uh, most ultrasound machines can be set to place the dot on either side of the screen. You just want to keep it consistent. If you look up near the apex of the heart, which is at the top, cardiology, they're, they're really interested in the, in the left ventricle, the endocardial architecture of the LV. So it's always up there on the right. The point of care, a lot of people are advocating put it on the left so you don't have to switch. People switch, they get confused, it looks like dextrocardia. Put it the way you're comfortable with but know that that can happen and reverse the image. Okay, next slide. So uh, the other thing that's important with cardiology, if the patient doesn't have any back injuries or there's no problem with breathing, is you want to roll the patient over into the left lateral decubitus position. Or like a lot of times I tell my patients, I just say, pretend like you're taking a nap. Get into the international nap position. Put your right hand on your side and your other hand up under your head like the picture right here. If you notice our other physician here, <laughs> he's holding it the wrong way. If you look at the way he's holding that, and I have, a, I have a feeling this is an actor and not a real sonographer or physician, <laughs> because see the way he's holding that probe, the, it, it will never be stable for measurement or anything because he's holding the tell of it. You've got to hold it like a pencil in a three-point position, just like this. So you anchor three points of contact. Okay, very good. Another thing real quick before we go. Um, when you're starting to scan on the apex, one of the tricks of the trade, secrets of the guild, if you will, is you grab the, the patient here in the left lateral decubitus position. You see the way she has the patient? Sometimes if you pull on their right shoulder, just pull their right shoulder back, you will open up the ribs. Just by rolling them back, the ribs will open up and you can get more lateral around and get that apex really good just by pulling that shoulder back a little. Okay, next slide. I know it seems very level one, guys, but these are important for great images. Then there's various dance steps. Once you begin, you, you, you manipulate the probe. The compression is basically pressing down on the probe, on the, on the human body. Rocking is rocking the probe like this. So you're scanning through an image, just like if you imagine a flashlight beam coming out of here, just like so, then you're scanning through this. Sliding, you're sliding down. Let's say you're sliding down looking at the LV. You're sliding. Fanning is you're fanning left, right, up and down. Twisting, you're spinning around. Like, say, going from personal long axis view to short axis view. Tilting, you can tilt and rock back and forth. So those are some hand techniques. Next, next slide. 
Um, I always think of the chest. This is a most of your patients, let's face it, aren't going to look like this guy. But um, your clock orientation and your, your certain swipes that you use. If you'll think of the index marker on the probe, let's say that this is the index marker, and you have the probe like so. If you think of the head cephalically as 12, 12 o'clock, and then you the next position is 2 o'clock, you would roll it around to 4 o'clock, as you see on this down here, the intercostal space, and then all the way to 9 o'clock. So just those positions like so. Think of the chest as a clock. Next slide, please. Here's an a, a infograph that's very interesting. shows the fluid status and the LV function, which is the crush, which you most want to do with your bedside point of care focused cardiac exam. Um, if you look at this, you know, the first view, this, all protocols change a little bit. The easiest view, subcostal, they want you to do that the first. Second would be to evaluate the volume status, looking at the IVC. Then you would go into the traditional echocardiogram. You'd go into the personal long axis view, number three, personal short axis, number four, and then grab that apical four chamber at, at that position number five. Okay, next. Here's another close-up here. This is the basic views of, of focused point-of-care exam. So take a look at the green right up there, this third, second or third intercostal space. You've got the index marker uh, pointing, I believe, at the 9 o'clock position. And what you're going to do is you're going to get the parasitic long axis view. So there's the 2D image, and then there's an anatomical image of your beam going through what it's going to look like. From that picture, you see the pivot. You would tw you would turn, twist your probe around to two o'clock. Then you would get the parasternal short axis view, personal away from the parasternal long axis view. This is at the typically the papillary muscle view. You can fan through that and get at the aortic level, and then the mitral level, and then the LV level. Um, the next move is the apical four chamber. So the yellow dot, you were going to go lateral. Typically, 99% of the time, this is probably one of the hardest images to get on the protocol because it's always foreshortened or it's off axis. So you want to go begin right there, and I'll talk more on this later, and get that position to get a nice four chamber. At the end, you want to do a sub xiphoid four chamber. Like I told you, you would switch your hand maneuver and do 20% and hold the probe like this. So the first one is hold probe, three-point, tripod, apical four, tripod, and then subcostal, dig in like that. Okay. And guys, by the way, uh, out of all the point-of-care exams, I will say that the two hardest to learn and to sort of get it in your hands and to get a feel for it, I, I would say just for scanning, number one is, is the cardiac. Cardiac is probably the hardest. Then I would say the muscle skeletal purely for anatomy. But you're fortunate because most physicians have a lot of anatomical and physiological training. So that may not be as challenging, but definitely for just the pure ultrasound and getting everything on angle and the right move, um, the cardiac is probably the hardest. Okay, the next slide. So it's going to take a little time. Here's some uh, anatomy of the heart in the parasternal long axis view. I'm going to run through them real quick here. Really important there is the LA. You see the, the, that's the left atrium. We have the left ventricle. We have anterior mitral valve, leaflet, posterior mitral valve, leachate. Up there is the coronary cusp, right coronary cusp, non-coronary cusp. And then at the very top, you know, the, the RV outflow tract. Interesting at the bottom there is the descending aorta. Uh, 